Hi, it's Kelly with CitrusTrikes.ca. I'm here in beautiful uh, Ruppolding, Germany with the Bambuck. It's a tandem electric trike. So my wife and I have been uh, riding it here in uh, Germany for a couple weeks to test it out and really get a sense of its capabilities. We put a few hundred kilometers on it so far, and so I apologize, it's a little bit dirty for the video. Uh, we did run into some uh, rain and some muck, but it's been super fun riding it. Since it's made here in Germany, we thought this was a fitting place to do our ride tests and the videos, especially here in Bavarian Alps, where we have lots of beautiful scenery, uh, but also some amazing trails with lots of hills and uh, some challenging terrain. So far we absolutely love it and you'll see that in our ride test video. Uh, in the first part of the video I'm going to explain the benefits of a tandem and of a trike and then I'm going to go uh, give you kind of an overview of all the details of the bike and then I'm going to go into detailed specs. At that point you may want to skip over to the ride test if that kind of bores you. If it's something that you're really interested in we've got all the details uh, on that coming up. Now if you are in Canada and would like to test ride one or purchase one and have us ship it to you or pick it up here in our store in Chiminas on beautiful Vancouver Island, you can reach out to us on our website at citrustrikes.ca. If you're outside of Canada, please head over to the bambuck.de website. You can find that there on the chain guard and uh, you can contact them directly with any questions you might have. The Bambuck is unique and quite innovative. It's a tandem, it's a trike, and it's got the e-assist. And let me explain the benefits of all of those. So as far as a tandem goes, people who like to ride together, such as my wife and I, love riding tandems. She enjoys coming along, and even though she's fully capable of riding her own bike, she isn't keen on shifting gears, braking, navigating, and what she thinks of as the general responsibility of not crashing. So the tandem is perfect for her is because she gets to enjoy cycling even more than if she were riding by herself. Since our combined mutual effort and the ability for the second rider to coast if they wish makes it possible to do all-day rides and touring to different towns do challenging hills, all the types of things that maybe would have uh, prevented her from going on a really long challenging ride. We can do that together. It's a lot of fun. Now, perhaps it's more obvious that uh, the tandem is really useful for people with disabilities. Any sort of impairment that may limit them from riding by themselves. So if you or someone you know has an impairment that prevents you from riding, I think you'll be excited by the Bambuck to see that it may open up new opportunities for you. It is a very clever design, so the stoker at the back, you can see that's a higher seating position than the captain on the front. That means the stoker can see where we're going. Later in the video, I'm going to show you how this actually is telescopic. So you'll notice some uh, attachment points here. We can loosen that off and some other tools here. I'll show you that in a little while. This back end slides all the way in, so it only takes up, I think, uh, two meters, 200 centimeters, something like that. So you can actually fit it in the back of a car, SUV. Uh, obviously you need to uh, fold the seats down, but that front boom is gonna come in. The seat's gonna fold down, the back seat's gonna come off, and it becomes a really nice compact package so you can actually travel with it. Speaking of traveling, that's what we're actually doing here with it in uh, Ruppolding. We don't have a car. We're always car free when we're here in uh, Germany. So this is our mode of transport, which is fantastic. We've been using it to get around, but also for sightseeing, uh, grocery shopping, uh, heading up into the mountains. It's been super fun, and you'll see some of that in the ride test video, which you can skip to at any time if you wish. So my wife and I have ridden a number of tandems over the years. Why are we so keen on the idea of a tandem trike? Well, there's lots of reasons. One that is obvious is comfort. The seating position is uh, super comfortable. We can easily adjust the uh, backrest, the neck rest on both the uh, front and the rear. And so you have this very, very comfortable uh, uh, seating position, especially on a longer ride. Um, you know, you ride a few hours on a bike, you're going to get sore. Not so with a trike. You can basically ride all day. The seat's very, very comfortable. Uh, lots of adjustability. This is the um, XL seat, or the comfort seat, so it's a little bit larger uh, than a regular trike seat. Uh, and that's a good idea because we're in a fairly upright uh, position on here. We've got the pedals a little bit lower than we'd normally have in a trike, so it's just super comfortable, and we'll talk about seating a little bit later but obviously that's one of the big benefits of a trike is just comfort it's just so uh, enjoyable to ride for a really long time 
Another benefit of a trike, of course, is safety. So starting and stopping on a bike, and especially on a tandem, are kind of the, the dangerous parts. Uh, starting on a hill on a tandem can be pretty tricky because you somehow have to stabilize the, the bike and have the stoker get ready, and then the captain needs to get on the pedals, and you need to start riding, and you need to have that minimum speed, otherwise you're going to fall over. On a trike, there is no minimum speed. So we can start in the middle of a hill, we can stop in the middle of a hill, easy to get on and off, there's no chance of falling. And so that's one of the things we love about the tandem trikes. The tandem bike was always just a little bit nerve-wracking, starting and stopping again. If you have to stop suddenly, again, you're responsible as a captain for both yourself and the stoker, and it can be a little bit challenging. With the trike, I have, it's just so relaxing, so comfortable, um, because I'm not worried we're not going to fall over, and we can go as slow as we want and stop wherever we wish. Speaking of starting and stopping, the awesome thing about a tandem trike is that you can stop whenever you want because you don't have to put your feet down, you just stay in your comfortable seat, and you can look around. And when you're riding in a place as beautiful as this, you will want to stop and look around. Even when I'm riding, I can see a lot more scenery as I'm not focused on staying upright. Now, if you don't believe me or not sure what I mean by that, try riding your bike with your eyes closed. That'll help you understand that you're actually processing a lot of visual stimuli while you're riding, and your brain is processing all that and ensuring that you stay upright. We don't have to worry about that on a trike, so I can actually look around, and when I start riding trikes, I see a lot more than I see when I'm riding my bike, because I can relax and look around and enjoy the beautiful scenery. In fact, one of the things I noticed riding my bike is that I generally don't stop, because I don't like stopping and starting and getting on and getting off, and it's just uncomfortable. And again, with the trike, you can stop, you can start, and you're in the same seating position, the same riding position, no matter what, so you can stop and look around and enjoy the beauty of the scenery around you. So I've talked about why we love riding a tandem electric trike, the uh, comfort and the relaxation, but for a lot of our customers, uh, one of the real benefits of a tandem trike is the stability. For some of our customers, they may have limitations that uh, prevent them from riding a regular bike, or maybe you don't have any limitations, but you just recognize that in a moment of inattentiveness or entirely something not within your control, you end up falling off your bike, you know it's going to be a problem, you know it's going to hurt, you know it's going to be a long recovery process. The beauty of the trike is you're not falling off, you don't have that worry, you've got that stability, so if you do have some concerns about balance or you just need that uh, peace of mind knowing that you're going to be safe, that's the beauty of a trike. That one combined with all the accessibility options and adaptability options with the Bambuck means that anybody can get on and ride and enjoy. So, for example, for my wife who has some problems with her Achilles tendon, stepping down really hard in an emergency stop situation on a bike is going to cause a lot of pain. This is super easy because she can easily get on and off and not have to worry about those uh, sudden stops. And in terms of the tandem capabilities, of course, it's fantastic because you've got that stability when you're stopped that the uh, stoker, the second rider, can get on here. For a lot of our customers, you're going to sit down and then lift their leg over the uh, boom there once they're sitting down. And then the captain can get in when everyone's ready to go. Then you can release the parking brake and start pedaling. Again, the great thing about a trike is there is no minimum speed like there is on a bike. So on a bike, you have to get moving right away. Otherwise, well, you're going to fall over, right? If you don't go fast enough, you're just going to topple over. And that can be very stressful for both riders. So with the trike here, we don't have that issue. There's lots of adaptability options. We've got seat belts, five-point harnesses. We can do different crank arm lengths. We can do different pedals. We can do wrist rests. We can do all sorts of things to ensure that everyone is safe and comfortable and enjoying their tandem trike. So tucked away in behind some of the chains there we have the Bosch CX uh, mid-drive motor. So this is an e-assist trike which is fantastic. Gives you 85 newton meters of torque. It's a pedal assist so while you pedal it helps you out and uh, very smooth, very natural. You get all the benefits of a mid-drive motor so when you change gears now the motor is also an easier gear. Very smooth and natural feeling and it's great to have because I came up here from all the way down there and on a trike and on a tandem you've got two people, three wheels and one motor so it's helpful to have the assistance to get you up all the hills so far especially with that roll off uh, gearing. We've made it up all the hills. Uh, fantastic to have the assistance from the motor just uh, makes it a lot easier to get up. Of course, you're not going to be able to stand on the pedals on a, on a trike like you would on a regular bike. And on a regular tandem, 
it can be tricky standing on the pedals. So it's nice having that assistance when you need it to help you get up the hills. Of course you can ride unassisted if you wish. You want to come up here, the beautiful view, you'll want to ride with the assistance on to help you get all the way up here. Um, but uh, you're riding in the valley and uh, just coasting, of course you can turn the assistance off. It's up to you, but it's really nice having that assistance. With the uh, Bosch system here, we actually have the option of dual batteries as well, which is fantastic. So we've got one there and one back there for tremendous range. Again, we're going to be using a little bit more uh, uh, power from the batteries because we've got two of us in a relatively heavy trike to get up the hills so it's nice having that dual battery for extended range. Okay, so I've given you an overview of why uh, we love the uh, Bambuk, the idea of the tandem electric trike, and why it might be useful for you as well. Let me just walk you through some of the features now before I get into the in-depth details and of course at any time if you wish you can skip over to the ride test. So I just came through a section of very broken pavement on the uh, trail here. So I think starting with comfort would probably be a good uh, place to start. We've got a uh, leaf spring suspension up front. And as you'll see in the ride test, this is actually quite amazing. It's super comfortable. Uh, it also uh, enhances the stability and the uh, handling of the trike. And that's really important. So if you get off camber where the uh, trail uh, or the road kind of tilts a little bit like that, or you're going fast fast around corners or broken pavement, it's going to help the trike stay stable, stay going where you want it to go so you don't have to worry about swerving and avoiding potholes, you're safer in traffic, there's just, you definitely want suspension on a, on a trike if you can, it's well worth it, not only for the comfort, like I said it's isolating you from all those bumps, but just in terms of safety and stability it's really important to have. So this is a leaf spring suspension up front which is quite incredible, and around back we actually have a uh, suspension uh, shock here. See if I can find it. And it's kind of hard to see. It's tucked in. There we go. It's a coil shock, uh, spring shock on the back here that again isolates the uh, rear rider from uh, all of the bumps. It's quite amusing when we'll ride along here. I'll say to my wife, there's a bump coming up because we're tandem riders. We're used to telling her because normally she can't see, but of course she can see pretty well. She's got a nice seating position. Um, and then she'll be like, what bump? <laughs> Even though we went through this massive pothole, the suspension is doing a really good job by isolating her from it. In fact, really a lot of times, the only time she notices when we're going through a bump is she can feel it with the pedals because the pedals, of course, are connected to the drivetrain, which is connected to me up front there. And uh, so the frame is experiencing those bumps. But because she's uh, on the suspension here on the back, she's being isolated from those. So it's uh, very, very effective. And again, ensures that your rear wheel is always in contact with the ground, giving you tremendous traction. And that's an important thing that we want to keep in mind. We want traction and stability, and the suspension is going to do that, as well as offer us a lot of comfort. And of course, while we're talking about comfort, we want to talk about the uh, seats. These are the uh, comfort seats. Uh, when you're configuring your Bambuck, you've got a few different uh, seat choices. Interestingly, these seats are actually from uh, Haza, and that's something that Bambuck is doing, is they're using some kind of off-the-shelf uh, products rather than designing their own from scratch. It's like somebody else has a really good seat, we'll use theirs, so it's quite a clever idea. These are the comfort seats, which means they're a little bit taller, uh, at the back here, a little bit deeper and uh, a little bit wider. And uh, that's a nice option because with the Bambuck here, you'll notice that your pedals, and you'll see when we do the ride test video, the pedals are lower than the seat by a fair bit. So when I'm sitting there, I'm actually um, fairly upright, fairly relaxed, and you can see my pedals, my feet are quite low compared to the seating position. So on a normal uh, seat on a trike, they're often very shallow. This is fairly deep because you're at an angle and your legs are extended out front so you don't need a lot of support. With this seat, uh, because your feet are going down, we do need a little bit more support there. So I do like the comfort seat, but uh, of course that's your choice when you're configuring it. You could go with the regular seat as well. If you go with the regular seat, then you may want the seat extender. That's actually going to at least get the bottom out a little bit further. It'll be a little bit narrower and not as tall, uh, but still very comfortable. And uh, of course these are also adjustable in terms of the angle. You can see we've got the ability to adjust the angle down there. Same for the stoker as well.
Other comfort items you have a choice in are the headrests here. These are angle adjustable and uh, quite comfortable to uh, have, but of course that's your choice. Uh, the bike, or sorry, the trike does come with fenders, uh, which is really handy. And uh, we've got this uh, full length uh, chain guard up front. It's actually enclosed on both sides at the top there, uh, protecting your pants from the chain. Same at the back here for the Stoker, that drivetrain is completely enclosed. Um, I'd be curious to see if we could actually go with uh, chain tubes like we would often see on a trike instead of these uh, aluminum chain guards. Uh, the reason I mention that is on bumps, these can get a little bit uh, noisy as you uh, go over bumps and maybe a chain tube would uh, be a little bit quieter, but then maybe it wouldn't be as uh, well protected because really uh, you don't have to worry about your pants at all getting on the chain or anything getting caught in there. It's completely enclosed and you know really protecting you well. I should mention that one of the options here on the fenders is to have the side piece here which is quite clever. It uh, I don't know how important it is to protect you from splashing. It's been very very effective in the rain that we've been riding it in um, but it definitely prevents your hands from getting in the spokes if you become inattentive and take your hands off the handlebars and just kind of relax them on the side you're not going to get them caught in the spokes so it might be worth considering adding those side guards as well. And of course we've got a rack. This has been super handy for uh, us uh, here in uh, Rupolding. Of course we don't have a car, so that's how we're getting around. We're doing all of our grocery shopping uh, and uh, easy enough to bring bags. It's a nice wide platform on the top here as well, so you can fit a good sized uh, trunk bag up there as well as uh, bags on the side. Speaking of the rack, one of my uh, small criticisms here is the lighting uh, is very good. We've got this uh, AXA blue line on the back here, nice and bright, running off of your main battery. But the wiring for the light is actually running externally along the frame here. So you just want to keep your eye on it that you don't get it caught in your bag and then pull the bag off and have the cables come out. Um, although they are zip tied on, so they're probably going to be there fairly well. Maybe I'd put another couple zip ties on there. But it would have been nice to see a rack uh, where the lighting is running inside, um, but I think this is probably a custom rack uh, because it does need to connect in here with the uh, suspension at the top here. It's super, super sturdy. I don't know if there's a weight rating on it, but you can see it's really well connected to the frame here. Uh, got little loops at the bottom here if you have uh, bags where you need to uh, clip them in on the side there. This is, of course, is protecting Preventing, preventing your bag, sorry, from hitting the spokes. So very, very handy, very practical. While we're at the back here, the other thing that would be awesome to see uh, would be the addition of a frame lock. Uh, when I get home, I'll experiment with it and see if there is any way to manage to mount a frame lock on here that would be really handy to have. Um, but you can actually get this really heavy duty chain. I'll grab it for you and show you what that looks like. Here we go. Check it out. It's a super heavy duty uh, City Chain X Plus granite from uh, Abus, uh, and it's key to like to the two batteries, so that's pretty cool. You need one key for both the batteries and for the chain. Super, super heavy duty chain, but also quite heavy. Um, and so I think in some cases it would be really cool to have a frame lock. I'm not particularly concerned about theft of the Bambuck. <laughs> it would be pretty hard to make off with it. Uh, you'd have to have, you know, planned how you're going to make off with it. It's, you know, big and heavy and you probably don't know how it uh, folds because it does fold quite small for transport. Um, and then what are you going to do with it? You know, if you try to sell it online, somebody's going to notice, you know, that their they're missing Bambuck is for sale. So I'm not too concerned about security. It is a nice option to have that chain and you can lock it up to wherever you wish. In terms of uh, safety, we talked about the rear light and uh, we also have a front light up front. Um, again, running off of your main battery with reflector on there. It's nice because it has this side cutout here, so it's very visible from the uh, side. If you're riding a lot at night, we do have the reflective sidewalls on the tires, which is nice. But maybe you'd want to put a few more reflectors somewhere on the uh, trike. But it is nice having that light up front. I've done some late night ri rides here in the uh, mountains actually to see how effective the light is and for most of our customers you're not going to be careening through the forest in the middle of the night like I was and the light will work out really well for you. If you're one of those rare folks like myself that's going to be doing 30 kilometers an hour through the forest trails and want to see you may want to upgrade to a, a brighter light but for 99% of people riding this trike it's more than enough. 
And one other little point uh, about uh, comfort before I move on to talking about the uh, Bosch system and the roll-off and all the rest of the bike stuff on it. Um, I would probably end up adding some wrist rests here. There's lots of options that'll work to make it even more comfortable, but it is super comfortable. Uh, I just love riding this trike and I've got lots of trikes and, and this one's just super, super relaxing. So I mentioned we have the Bosch uh, mid-drive motor here. It's the Bosch Performance Line CX. That's Bosch's highest torque motor with 85 newton meters of torque. And of course, torque is what gets us up the hills. So it's nice having a lot of torque. Uh, you've got um, two people, one motor, so we're gonna want all the help we can get. And it's really nice having that assistance for the hills. Um, we are using the uh, regular Bosch system with the uh, Kiox display here. Uh, the Kiox is pretty cool. You can pair it with your phone, customize all the screens after every trip it'll upload your trip information to the Bosch e-bike connect uh, website you can export it to Strava or Google Fit you can pair it with lots of different things um, you can even send directions from your phone using Komoot uh, to the display so it'll actually show you where to turn so lots of really cool things on the uh, Kiox display here it is removable Bosch does sell a feature where when you take it off, now the bike can't be turned on except with your Kiox. Any other Kiox won't work, so that's an another option. Another cool thing that Bosch does with the uh, Kiox display here is you can customize any of the uh, settings as well. So we've got different levels of assistance that are controlled through the uh, controller here. So you can see we've got off, Eco, Tour, Sport, and Turbo. You could actually customize those levels if you wish as well. And then you've got the left and the right buttons here to cycle through the information on the screens for you. Now, if you prefer Bosch's Nyon display, we could certainly do an upgrade on that for you instead of the uh, Kiox here. Uh, the Nyon is going to be touchscreen with GPS, offline maps, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, a little bit bigger and easier to read, although this is uh, fairly easy to read. I like the fact that it's color-coded, so I don't have to worry about whether or not I can read Tour on there. I can just go by color, and to be honest, I'm almost riding in turbo anyways. This isn't using the new Bosch Smart System, and there's a couple of reasons for that. So the Bosch Smart System uh, is a new system from Bosch. It does use uh, essentially the same motor, just the wiring is different. And unfortunately, the Smart System doesn't support dual batteries, and that's one of the features we really like having. It also does not support e-shift, and that's an important thing that we're using with the roll-off internally geared hub. So speaking of the roll-off, that's your transmission here in the back, uh, not a motor. Uh, that means all of the gears, 14 gears, are enclosed inside the hub. It also means you have the option of electronic shifting, so you can shift while you're stopped. So a traditional gearing system, of course, you're going to have a cassette on the outside here. Your chain's going to jump up and down as you change gears. It means you can't shift while you're stopped. It also means that you are going to be replacing cassettes and chains fairly frequently because it's a wear item. And sometimes it means your gears aren't going to shift when you want them to. And they're going to shift when they're not supposed to because things get out of adjustment. With the roll-off, with all the gears enclosed in the back hub here, you never have that problem. Very little maintenance you have to worry about. Uh, these hubs last essentially forever. Uh, we know there's uh, roll-offs out there with well over 100,000 kilometers on them. So uh, you just need to do an annual oil change uh, or every 5,000 kilometers. Uh, other than that, really no maintenance, no adjustments. With the option to shift electronically, it's brilliant. Of course, even without that electronic option, you can shift while you're stopped. Um, but with the electronic, it's it's brilliant. It just shifts so easily, very, very quickly. Uh, the shifter is way up at the front here. You've got the buttons here to shift gears, the plus and the minus. If you press and hold it, it'll shift three at a time. Uh, plus, you can enable the option to automatically downshift when you stop to whatever gear you choose. A lot of times it's five because it's a nice starting gear, but you can change that if you wish. One of the other big benefits of a roll-off, aside from maintenance and being able to shift while you're stopped, the electronic shifting, is the huge gear ratio. So we've got a 526% gear ratio. What that means in practical terms is it's got a very low, low gear so you can climb steep hills. And that's important when we've got the tandem here, we've got two riders, uh, you know, with a fair bit of weight and we've got one motor. So it's nice being able to go to a nice easy gear and climb that hill. Very rarely do we need to go as low as one. But when we've got a very, very steep hill, one is really nice to have. And the flip side, if you want to go fast, you can, when you get up to 14, uh, you can be pedaling downhill pretty quickly and not run out of uh, gearing. 
uh, with a traditional gearing system where the gears are going up and down, you'll often find that once you get to, you know, 35, 40 kilometers an hour, your legs are spinning too quickly. Uh, but with the roll-off, you've got such a wide gear ratio that you can keep pedaling at higher speeds. And of course, the, the, the real benefit is having that low gear, making it really easy. And so one of the, the brilliant things about the trike is you can, uh, you know, climb a hill, stop halfway up, rest if you wish. And because you've got the roll-off, you can go ahead and shift down into one and start pedaling again and uh, keep climbing up the hill. So I love having the roll-off. Another clever option here with the uh, drivetrain and the gearing is uh, this particular one we've configured so that the stoker, which is sitting at the back here, um, they can actually coast if they wish. So I can be pedaling up front and the stoker can take a rest if they wish. And so that's an option. We've added that so that allows the uh, stoker to, uh, to just coast. That's what this setup here is for. And that's a nice option. Um, a lot of times on a traditional tandem, you'll want actually the pedals in phase so that you're pedaling together um, otherwise if your pedaling gets out of phase on a regular tandem it can get a little bit wobbly but of course uh, we've got a trike here <laughs> so we're not worried about that so it's not a problem for the stoker to coast and then your pedals get out of phase not a you're not going to notice that at all while you're pedaling because the trike is very very stable so before I get into the various configuration options for building the BAM bike, I'll just run through a couple of the other kind of bike specs. And again, I'll jump into a lot more detail later in the video. Uh, at any time, you might want to skip over to the ride test video to see how much fun it is. So regular kind of bike stuff, we've got uh, hydraulic disc brakes on the front two wheels. So it's a coupled uh, brake lever, which is quite clever. So we've got um, this one lever here on the right is going to control both of the front brakes. And it's hydraulic, of course, which we want. So lots and lots of stopping power. Power. Typically on a trike like this with the two wheels in the front and the one in the back, uh, the tadpole trike, we're going to want to use our front brakes for most of the stopping. We do have a second brake lever over here. This is our parking brake. It's a mechanical disc brake on the rear. Uh, it's important that we don't really want to use the uh, rear brake very much other than for parking, of course. So all we do for that is we pull the lever up here, the brake lever up, and push this here. That's going to lock it into place. Interestingly, we also have a parking brake on the hydraulic brake on the front here as well. Just put that in, push the lever through, and to release you press that. So lots of uh, parking brakes, which is pretty cool. So on the back, yeah, it's just an avid mechanical disc brake, and uh, we're going to mostly use that for parking. Uh, but you could use it as a as a kind of a drag brake to really slow you down on a long descent. Um, but we don't want to just grab onto that. You're going to skid out the back end. You're going to not have as much control. So we're going to mostly use the front brakes and then use the uh, back brake there for parking or as a kind of a drag brake to slow you down a little bit in conjunction with the front brakes. We also have uh, highly puncture resistant uh, Marathon Plus tires from Schwalbe. We've got the reflective sidewall. It's interesting when you've got 24 inch tires up front, that's actually pretty cool because it gives you really great uh, rollover on very challenging terrain. If you've got potholes and things like that or big stones and rocks, it's going to make it easier to roll over. A lot of times we see a 20 inch wheel on the front of a trike. It also means that it gives you a nice high seating position, and that uh, gives you a great view. It also makes you really safe in traffic. This is visible. <laughs> People see us coming, right? So if you're worried about that, you don't have to be. Uh, it's a very high seating position, makes it really easy to, to be seen. And on the back here, again, that puncture resistant tire, it's a Schwabi Marathon. But here, uh, I love this. They've gone with the Tour tire, so you can see it's a more aggressive tread pattern. That's perfect because it's going to give you lots of traction for when you're on gravel and climbing hills. It's also a 26 inch tire, so a little bit uh, bigger than the front tires. And again, that's putting the second rider in a nice higher position so they can see over the first rider. Um, but it also gives you a, a, a really nice, um, comfortable riding. So if you're riding through potholes and things like that, that 26 inch tire really will span the gaps quite well. So before we dive into the nitty gritty details of how everything works, uh, or you skip over to the ride test video, I'm going to talk about some of the options that you can configure the uh, trike with when you configure it. These of course are all custom made in Germany. This is a really uh, cool phone holder here. All you do is put your phone in here, these clamps tighten it, that's going to tighten into place. I've been using it a fair bit and it's held my phone really, really well. Uh, the only challenge for me with my phone is I need to move it up a little bit uh, because the sides press the uh, volume buttons. But other than that, it's been working really well. 
I mentioned the idea that you can configure it with dual or single batteries. I do recommend the uh, dual batteries. It's going to draw 5% from each battery and switch back and forth, which is fantastic. That prolongs the lifespan of your batteries. Now you could buy it with a single battery and then just bring a spare along. That's another option as well. You can see I've opted for mirrors on both sides. Uh, that's handy to have, highly adjustable. Love having the mirrors. When you're on a trike, it is a little bit hard to twist around and see what's behind you. And it is nice knowing uh, what's coming up behind you. I mentioned already the side protection for the fenders. That's a nice option to consider adding. Uh, pedals. So, pedals, when we're talking about trikes, one of the things we want to make sure is that we talk about foot retention. So ideally we don't want your foot falling off the pedal while you're riding. It could strike the, the ground, you could get injured. So we want to make sure that we keep your feet on the pedals. We've got lots of different options. Bambuck has a bunch. We have a bunch because uh, lots of different choices. So you can reach out to us if you're in Canada. Happy to answer those questions for you as to what to use. Right now we're just using these Velcro straps. That's keeping my uh, foot in place fairly well. And it does allow me to spin. Uh, when we're climbing a steep hill, for example, I do like to be able to both push and pull on my pedals, so having that strap allows me to pull back. Interestingly, my wife in the back here, although we have the straps installed, she's not been using them. She's just been relying on her uh, grippy shoes and the grips on the pedals here to keep her feet on. She hasn't had a problem. I, though, tend to use these straps not only for power, but I sometimes go riding by myself, <laughs> like I have now, uh, onto you know some challenging train with a lot of bumps and I get going maybe a little quicker than I should. And, you know, in my defense, what I'm really trying to do is see what is the trike capable of? How far can I push it? And so far it's been pretty impressive. Uh, so for that reason, I want to keep my feet on because sometimes I'll go over a big bump and I want to make sure that my feet aren't coming off. Again, we've got lots of different options. Uh, just reach out to us and we can discuss that with you. At home, I ride clipless shoes. So those are special shoes with special clips on the pedals makes it super easy to get on and off. Of course, I never ride clipless on my bike because I know that at some point I'm gonna stop suddenly, I forget to unclip and fall over. Remember on a trike, when you stop suddenly, you're in the same riding position as riding. You don't actually have to get off your seat. You don't have to move your feet off the pedals. So a clipless solution is a good idea uh, if you don't mind getting the custom footwear. Uh, just bring you over to the back here. I'll try not to fall in the creek while I do it. Uh, somewhere at the back here, there we go. You can see the clip. There's the holder for the flag. For some reason we didn't get the flag uh, when we got the uh, trike here in Germany. I'm not too concerned about it because we're really visible, but if you want to be in even more visible, uh, you can put a flag there, either one from Bambuck or any standard trike flag will fit in there. Another cool option you could configure would be turn signals. We didn't do that, but uh, you can check out our website for details on the turn signals. Uh, cool thing about a tandem is if I don't want to take my hands off the handlebars, which generally I don't have a problem with, um, especially because my right hand is controlling the front brakes, uh, so my left hand I can signal, but of course Allison or your stoker uh, can uh, signal for you, which is pretty cool. Our trike doesn't have the uh, signals and it doesn't have the water bottle holders, but you can put water bottle holders onto the trike as well. We've used these handy little bags here, uh, zip, or, uh, use the Velcro straps to put it onto the back of the seat, and my stoker can reach that one no problem, and I can reach that one, but there's also uh, water bottle cages if you prefer that. I've showed you the chain lock, which is really cool. The other thing I don't have to show you, but I'm sure you can imagine what they look like, uh, ring covers for both the seats, or you can get a ring cover for the whole trike. Of course, if you're gonna put the ring cover on the whole trike, you are gonna to have to uh, compress the trike. You're gonna to have to bring uh, everything in, take the uh, chain guard off. I'll show you that later in the video, how you can basically make it a little bit smaller, and you can also find that on the Bambuck website as well. Some other options include this uh, really cool seat back bag. I'm not mounting it right now because normally would need to take the headrest off here, and then this mesh here on the back of the seat would just attach to the uh, back of the seat there so it's really handy usually we'd put it up on the uh, captain's seat here the stoker can reach We've got a zipper compartment and lots of storage in there um, so it's a really nice option you just have to take the headrest off and then install it uh, of course you do have the rack on the back here for bags as well another uh, interesting option when you're con configuring this is uh, either for the captain or the stoker or both you can do uh, seat belts either a two-point lap belt or a five-point harness with padded shoulder straps as well so lots of really cool options those are all on the website. So to make adjustments to the uh, boom and the overall length in order to accommodate different uh, heights of riders or to uh, 
shorten up the whole length for transport, you'll need a couple tools here. And uh, I keep them in this really handy uh, storage compartment and behind the uh, seat here. And so to adjust the front boom, you'll notice that there is a cable here for the lights and it's mounted magnetically. So you just want to be uh, aware of that, especially if you're bringing the boom all the way in. You'll want to uh, make sure that there's nothing hanging down um, to catch on anything. And uh, that just attaches like that. So the first thing we do is we loosen off this uh, bolt right here at the front. That's going to allow us to change the length of the boom. Then we're going to come around to the side here and loosen this one as well. Now I should mention that Bambuck has a couple really in-depth videos of how to do all this on their website. I'm just giving you a quick overview of how it works. You'll want to check out their in-depth video if you uh, end up with the uh, Bambuck and want to see how it works. Down over here we've got this uh, green lever. So this green lever here, pressing that down, loosens the tension off the chain so you can see the chain hanging down there. That's going to allow me now to pull the boom out if I need to make it longer because of course the tension on the chain is gone. Um, if I need to bring the boom in or I need to get the tension back once I've got that boom adjusted to the length that I want, then I take this uh, Allen key here, put it in here, there we go, tighten that up. And now I can either tighten it up until the chain is uh, nice and tight um, and the little lever move there, or I can keep turning and that will bring the uh, boom all the way in. And of course, once you've tightened the main bolt here, and you can check the um, Bambuck website, uh, their video will explain uh, the uh, Newton meters for the torque setting on that, um, but you do want it good and tight. And then you're going to tighten this uh, bolt here as well since you loosened that one. We follow a similar procedure for the back. We again are going to loosen off this bolt here. And that's going to allow us to change the length at the back here. If we need to change the leg length for the uh, rider, then we do have this uh, green lever here. There we go. So the angle of the lever here can be adjusted just simply by pulling it out and moving it. And that's going to allow us now to uh, loosen it and that's going to take the tension off the chain so the chain drops there that's going to allow us now to move the uh, rear seat forward or backwards as we need to in order to accommodate the leg length of the uh, stoker reaching the pedals uh, or if you want to make the uh, bambuk very small for transport once you've got it adjusted to the uh, length that you want you're going to come back and take the uh, allen key here put it in that hole there and we want to tighten that up until the uh, tensioner on the roll-off is about 90 degrees. Once you've done that, you're going to come back to this green handle here, the green lever, and tighten it up. And of course, once you've got that one tightened, you're going to tighten this one up again, and you're all set. Again, there's more details on this on the Bambuck website. So, so far in the video, I've talked about why we love the Bambuck, why it might be a good fit for you, kind of give you an overview of all the uh, bike components, and uh, looked at adjustments. You may want to skip over to the ride test uh, at this point, unless you're really keen on the technical details of how it works, in which case this might be quite fascinating for you. So, uh, at the, the heart of the drivetrain here, we do have that Bosch Performance Line CX motor. Now, here's an interesting thing. You'll notice... There's no crank arm on this side or the other side. So what happens is we've got this chain here going through a bunch of pulleys covered by the uh, chain guard here up to the front where the stoker or the captain is pedaling. So I'm pedaling up here, I'm turning the chain and that chain in turn is turning this cog here which is emulating a crank arm. So basically, I'm pedaling up there, moving the chain, and the chain is emulating being a crank arm on the left side of the drivetrain. So it's as if I'm pedaling directly with the uh, motor here on the left side of the drivetrain. If I come over to the right side here, you'll notice we essentially have the same thing happening for the stoker. So we've got a bit of a freewheel set up here so that the stoker can coast, uh, which is uh, really handy because, of course, if I'm pedaling on that side and the the Bosch motor basically thinks I'm turning the crank arms, this side is going to turn as well because both your crank arms turn 
at the same time, right, <laughs> on a regular bike because there's no crank arm here. We've got this mechanism on here instead. And so there's two cogs on this side. One is for the stoker here, and like I said, the stoker is able to freewheel. That's an option on this uh, particular one. You could choose not to have that if you wish. And then the second cog here is running the chain back through, again, this really cool uh, integrated chain guard through a bunch of pulleys and to the rear wheel and to the transmission, which is the roll-off there. So basically... The uh, stoker is basically pedaling the right crank arm, and the captain is pedaling the left crank arm, and we've got a chain here from the motor going back to the rear wheel and our transmission in the rear wheel. So when I change gears to make it easier to pedal to go up a hill, for example, that has an immediate effect on the motor, which also has an immediate effect on both the uh, stoker and the captain. So it's actually quite brilliant when you think about how he designed this. I believe he's an engineer and that you can see in the design that it's a really quite clever solution. So then there's a couple of other things happening here. We've got a bunch of pulley wheels so that we can make sure that we have a good chain line, a tensioner on the roll off there. We also need those pulley wheels, as we've seen before, so that we can adjust the uh, boom and take up the slack on the chain, both for the front and for the rear rider. So to start the ride test, I thought I'd start in the, one of the beautiful fields here in uh, Rupolding. And one of the things you notice right away on the Bambuck is it's so relaxing. It's a nice upright riding position, very comfortable. Of course, you can adjust the angle of the seats. Because it's a trike, I can look around, enjoy the beauty of the scenery around me, not be so concerned. I mean, it's a narrow path, so I don't want to fall off it if I can avoid it. But even if I do get a little too close to the edge, it's not a problem. I'm not going to fall off the trike which you could do with your bike, of course. So very relaxing. The other nice thing we can do is stop, look around, enjoy the view anywhere along the way. Now, of course, you could do that on your bike, but then you're getting off, getting back on. And the nice thing with the trike, of course, is that we're in the same seating position. Your feet are still on the pedals regardless. The bambuck is a little bit longer, so you have to keep that in mind when you're turning, but it's not a problem. For example, I'm just going to do a left turn here. No problem with good turning radius on trails. Where you will find a problem is if we came the wrong way here and decided that we wanted to turn around, turning around is not so easy. I'm going to get Allison to get off the trike here for you and demonstrate the turning radius. Okay, so the Bambuck we say is very relaxing and it tends to be fairly relaxed itself because if you want to do a sharp corner, you're not really going to be able to do that. Again, you can corner on the trails as you wish, but here I am going as sharp as I can to do a U-turn. <laughs> you can see it's a pretty wide U-turn. So if we do need to do a U-turn because we go the wrong way, we'll usually stop and do a two or three point turn instead. Okay, here's another hill we're going to go down. A little bit of gravel, loose gravel on here, actually chunky loose gravel. And this is a good example of something that on a bike might concern some of our customers. Definitely my wife Allison would look at that and she'd hear the crunching gravel and be a little bit worried. Is she going to lose traction? Uh, is it going to be unstable? But again, with the trike, we have none of those concerns. And again, we can just stop anywhere we want and admire the beautiful view. This is another one of those great fields in uh, Rupolding here. If I stop suddenly, either because I see something exciting or some cow runs out in front of me, uh, with the roll off here, it's really nice because I can downshift over stop. So I didn't downshift first. I'm gonna drop it down into uh, five and um, that'll let us get started. So we've got a good hill climbing test up ahead on the left here. It's uh, quite steep. I'm hoping that the uh, GPS overlay might work on the camera here. It's our first time using a 360 camera, so it'll be interesting to see how well this works out. But uh, it'll be hard to tell 
looking at the video how steep it is. Of course, you'll hear me huffing and puffing, so that'll give you an idea. And hopefully the GPS overlay will also show you that it's quite a steep hill. So for that, we're gonna use turbo and we're gonna gear the roll-off down to pretty low gear. And we're both gonna be pedaling pretty hard. That is one thing you notice with the tandem, any tandem, whether it be the Bambuck or anything else. We do have two riders and the power of two riders, but also the weight of two riders and only a single motor. So you will notice that on really steep hills, it's gonna be a little bit easier on your own bike with your own motor than with two people on one bike sharing a motor, but it's not too bad. So I'm gonna downshift right down to one. Cool thing about a trike, of course, there's no minimum speed. We're on our bike right now. I'm hitting about seven, not quite seven kilometers an hour. We'd be wobbling <laughs> and it would be a little bit scary, especially on a tandem. Because if you go too slow, you lose the gyroscopic effect, you're gonna fall over and it gets really nerve wracking. With this, of course, we could even stop if we wanted to at any point on the hill. Might be a little bit hard to get going, so we won't do that right now. But you know, it's not bad. We're down in one, we're on turbo. We're six, seven, and although I'm huffing and puffing, I could actually pedal harder. Don't tell Allison. <laughs> She's pedaling pretty hard as well. I don't even need to be in uh, one anymore. I'll shift to two. That electronic shifting with the roll off, it's pretty accommodating. Ideally, you want to downshift without pedaling really hard. You want to ease off a little bit, but shifting to the harder gears like I've been doing now, it's been really happy even though we've been pedaling hard, shifting very quickly for us. So the roll off is really nice to have. Whew, made it up the hill and you get rewarded with this beautiful view. And again, if I were on my bike, I'd wanna keep going because I don't like stopping. I don't like getting off the saddle. I don't like putting my feet down. Here I can stop, look around, get a drink. Cool thing about your passenger, of course, the stoker on the back is they can go hands-free whenever they want and uh, have ice cream while we ride if they wish. So I switched the camera angle up front here so you can take a look at where we're going. And this is really interesting because the way the Bambuck is set up right now, I actually can completely control it with just one hand. So, you know, ideally you should have both hands on the handlebars. Um, right now I don't, <laughs> but uh, I actually have both the front brakes on my right hand, the uh, assist levels from the Bosch system to change that, and the roll-off all on the right hand. So I actually don't need my left hand. I can still steer, of course, with just one hand. I can operate both brakes. On the left hand we do have the parking brake but again we're not going to use that most of the time when we're riding. So I wanted to switch camera angle so you can see we've got some uh, gravel up here, some bumps and uh, the Bambuck suspension is incredible. I'll try to find some bumpier sections later on for you but potholes and things like that you hardly even notice them. Often I'll call out to Allison that there's a bump coming and she doesn't even notice it because she doesn't feel it. So for the stoker especially, a section like that can be a little disconcerting at first um, because I've got the two wheels up front, right? So I feel really stable. And when we go off camber, like we did back there where the trail is kind of tilting, and in fact, it's tilting towards a steep cliff. <laughs> it can be disconcerting because at the back, you've only got the single wheel behind you. You've got the steel tubing from the frame. There's gonna be a little bit of flex and you're gonna be leaning over a fair bit. And if you're not used to leaning over on your bike, it's gonna be disconcerting for you and it'll take a while to get used to. However, uh, it's not a problem. You're not gonna fall over. We haven't had any wheel lift at all, no matter how hard I try, this is incredibly stable. By the way, here's some nice bumps and a big hill climbing, coming up here as well. Um, it just takes some getting used to. So normally I'd miss those bumps. <laughs> I just went through it for fun. Of course, the fenders work really well. Uh, there's a nice big pothole. And again, it doesn't impact the handling. It doesn't, uh, you don't have to avoid them, which is a nice thing. This is a fairly big vehicle, which is nice from a safety perspective. People definitely see us coming. Here's a nice 
steep hill again. Potential for problems because it's very loose gravel. But with that uh, Marathon Tour tire on the back there, we're getting lots of traction. Climbing up here, no problem. So back to the uh, suspension. The idea is that with uh, a wider vehicle like this, if I'm riding in traffic, I don't want to be avoiding obstacles, swerving around. That makes me unpredictable to motorists, can be unsafe. So it's nice knowing that even with really big potholes, the suspension's just gonna soak it all up. It's not gonna jar me, I'm not gonna fall off, of course, like I could on a bike. I'm gonna just be able to keep going straight and not only be comfortable, but also be safe because I'm not getting thrown around. We've done a number of longer rides on the Bambuck so far. And one of the really interesting things about long rides that sometimes people don't realize is it's not actually always the pedaling that wears you out. It can be the uncomfortable riding position on a bike that your muscles get sore. Uh, you know, if you're hunched over, your back's getting sore and your wrists are getting sore. But there's also that element of uh, being kind of thrown around by your bike. Uh, all the jarring that comes through the road, all of that can be tiring. So it's been a lot of fun having this for longer rides. Yeah, we get back at the end of the day and we can feel, you know, that we've been pedaling a lot and we've exerted ourselves, but we're not sore, we're not broken because it is so comfortable, not only from the suspension, but of course the seating position, the weight is distributed over the seat. You can adjust it, it's just super, super comfortable. So we've done a lot of gravel paths so far and I've always been very impressed with the traction of these tires. It's uh, gripping quite well, even though this is fairly loose material. If you hear me saying uh, tilty sometimes, that's my warning to my uh, stoker that the trail may be off camber, a little bit angled one way or another. And like I said, it does take some getting used to because it can feel like there's something wrong because you're at quite an angle. And that's just uh, the way some of the trails are around here. But they are beautiful trails. The other uh, great thing about the uh, Bambuck, so I mentioned climbing hills can be a little bit of work. When we've got the hills, you, you'll hear me huffing and puffing. But when, going, you're, when you're going down hills, it rolls really well. In fact, you don't even need a big hill like this is a, a pretty good hill here. If you've just got a little bit of a slope, it'll still roll really, really well. Now the stoker doesn't have a brake. It's all up to the captain. I tend to go a little bit quicker than my wife would. So I try to remember to use my brakes every now and then on these hills. Uh, it's easy to forget and not realize how fast you're going because it is so stable, because it handles so well. With that suspension, you're just kind of floating over everything. You don't realize till you glance down at that Kiox display and go, oh, okay, I was going a little bit quicker than I imagined that I was going, and so maybe I should use the brakes. Like I said, we tend to be fairly relaxed on the Bambuck. I mean, again, you've got beautiful scenery like this that you want to enjoy. We tend not to ride as quickly, perhaps, as I might on my bike uh, by myself, uh, but that's not a bad thing. It's, it's really, you know, quite enjoyable, quite relaxing. It's nice to have a bit of a slower pace. And again, to do things like this, where I would not normally on a bike, I'd be zooming down here, uh, you know, glance at the view and then keep riding. Here, I can actually even stop halfway down the hill if I wish. Put the parking brake on, it's completely unnecessary. It's definitely wide enough for people to pass. <laughs> but it's a good example of how on your bike you probably wouldn't stop 
in the middle of a hill, either going up or down, again, getting on and off and all that. Here we're just sitting, same riding position, feet uh, relaxed and looking around and enjoying the beautiful scenery. We've had a lot of very steep hills, so we've put a few hundred kilometers on the Bambuck already before doing this video. I always like to really get a good sense of what a bike is capable of, and we've certainly put this through its paces. The brakes are fantastic. We've had a lot of steep hills, and you know, there's been a few of them crazy steep on gravel, and I always did this experiment where I just came to a complete stop. Can I completely stop? Uh, and if I completely stop, then I know we've got lots of braking power. So now we have to go on the uh, road for a little ways, and uh, it's interesting because it's a common concern people have regarding trikes on the road is, you know, you're taking up more room, uh, is it going to be unsafe, are people going to be able to see you? Well, I can guarantee you, people see us. <laughs> the Bambuck is visually very imposing, um, you know, even with the headrests here, and you've got the lights up front and the back, and very, very visible. So. We've never had anybody pass us unsafely. We get a lot of respect on the road, uh, which is really nice. Whereas we have seen uh, people with bikes, the common misconception that motorists have is they look at the bike, they see the amount of room the tires are taking up on the road, which is very little, and think that's all the room that the cyclist needs. Obviously that's not the case. If you measure the width of the handlebars on a bike compared to the width of the bambuck here, we're actually taking up about as much space as a bike would need to have in order to ride safely. So we don't actually need more room, but it looks like it to motorists and so they give us that space, which is great. We've got a nice long climb here. We've got it on turbo. <laughs> we ride a lot on turbo. Uh, mix of sport and turbo. Two are sometimes, but we've got the dual batteries, so I'm not too concerned about range. I know we're gonna make it on the on the ride today, so you know, might as well make it a little bit easier for ourselves. But uh, certainly if you're concerned about range, the Bosch Kiox does have a very accurate range calculator. It's gonna tell you exactly how much further you can go. Now, in this case, we're climbing. We're gonna climb for a number of kilometers. And so what's gonna happen is that range calculator is going to drop and drop and drop to the point that I may get a little bit anxious thinking, oh, I'm not halfway there, but I'm pretty close to half of my battery. What am I gonna do? The interesting thing is that it's calculating it based on the past few kilometers that you rode. So if you're climbing a hill like we're doing now, it's gonna say, okay, well, you're using a lot of power for the hill. You have a lot less range. But of course, once we get to the top of the climb and are going up to a beautiful mountain meadow today, once we're up there, it's almost downhill the whole way back. So it'll be interesting because going back, then the range calculator is gonna recalculate and say, oh, you can do that whole trip again. And that's typically the kind of range we're getting. So if you're curious about the range, the Bosch website does have a fairly accurate range calculator put in your weight and the weight of the bike, all those different parameters and it'll try to get a pretty good idea of the range for you. The uh, European roads here are quite narrow, and so just as a courtesy, you notice that I uh, rode off onto the curb there again. The nice thing about the stability of this bike is if you are forced off onto the curb or somewhere else, unlike a bike where you may fall, or possibly fall into traffic, which we definitely don't want happening. Here we know we have that stability to scoot over. The other thing we can do very easily is stop at any time, again, without concerns about toppling off our bike. So far we've been following this creek, and now we're gonna head up a very long, hill, steep at parts, not too steep at other parts, but it is uh, loose, loose gravel here. It's got a bit of a ridge in the middle, so when we can, we're going to kind of ride on the middle so that we're not angled too much, and again, it's not a safety concern, it's just a matter of feeling comfortable with that uh, lean. 
as we climb, we're actually eventually going to get up to the uh, source of this creek and a uh, beautiful waterfall, a beautiful mountain valley. So it's definitely well worth the climb. So to start out here, we are down into the first gear on the roll off. We could probably be in two or cadence is fairly high right now on turbo, of course. Hitting around seven kilometers an hour, that's not bad. These water troughs on the left are a really cool feature of the Bavarian Alps. Another nice feature that we're heading towards the top of the hill here, which makes it worth it aside from the beautiful views. It's a couple of mountain huts with food, traditional uh, types of mountain hut food. It's a lot of fun. And of course, it'll be a lot of fun going down. We're not going to come back the same way. We certainly could. The brakes are more than adequate for a uh, grade like this. Even though we've got loose gravel, it's not a problem. Uh, but uh, we're going to follow a different creek on the way back. So far, we're making good progress. We could, of course, at any time stop and take a rest, although uh, it's probably better to stop somewhere that's not quite as steep. My only concern with stopping on somewhere too steep on gravel is you could find your rear wheel spinning up a little bit. Pavement, of course, we don't have that issue. Again, uh, seven kilometers an hour, not a problem. We tend to see people riding up here on bikes, kind of weaving back and forth, trying to reduce the steepness of the angle and so they can keep up their speed to avoid falling off. We don't have that concern with the uh, trike. Beautiful opening on the right there. We've actually come up quite a ways. I'm hoping that the uh, GPS overlay might show you the gradient and elevation gain here. Hard to say, we do have some tree coverage that may limit it. So that's the uh, worst part of the climb, I think. Now we're able to shift to a little bit of some higher gears, four and five pick up our speed a little bit. And of course, this might be a good place to stop for rest if we wanted to as well. It's interesting that uh, just a little bit of change in grade makes a big difference. Here we're in five, traveling about 12 kilometers an hour. I'm not having to work nearly as hard. Maybe that's because Allison's doing all the work, but uh, on a steeper grade, you know, we're down to one and going a little bit slower quite the cliff on the right over there. That looks like we're almost at the top. Take you over and show you the waterfall. It's definitely well worth the climb, but it is a long climb. I think the first part was the worst. Normally on a trike, I ride with clipless pedals. That might've been something to do here. It would allow me to spin a little bit more, a little bit more power, but uh, the Bambach is more about relaxing. So these straps that I'm using right now seem to work quite well as well. Just wanna try to do something to keep your feet on the pedals. Here, it's gonna be a little tilty. 
as the road is tilted towards the cliff. Heading across the gate here, we've got some free range cows up here. This gate will keep them from escaping the meadows. And again, some big bumps there, and you really don't notice with the suspension. With the 24 inch tires on the front, you do have a really good attack angle as well for big bumps. You easily roll right over them, and the suspension keeps you stable and comfortable as well. All right. We made it, it wasn't such a bad climb after all. And now we'll go take a look at the waterfall. Of course, when I'm parking, you'll notice that I always think about how I'm gonna exit. So I'm gonna park beside the uh, fence here, not facing into it. That way we can just ride off when we're ready. Got a little lookout point here for us. And there's the source of that creek. Beautiful waterfall. So now that we've done all that climbing, we've got a little short descent and then we head into the um, meadow. Switch the camera position here to the front of the boom so you can see where we're going, see where we've come from. Again, this isn't a huge hill, uh, but the Bampa, once it starts rolling, it rolls really well. I'm gonna go slowly up ahead here. The uh, waterfall we were showing you, there's the creek down to the right here, and there's a little dam that used to hold it back in the uh, meadow here. That's on the right, it's quite, quite pretty, quite a scenic valley. <laughs> and a pup that wants to come with us. If you do have a dog, trikes are a lot easier to run your dog uh, with than a bike dog gets excited, it's not going to pull you off the trike like it can with a bike. I'm going to stop here and change the camera angle so you can appreciate how beautiful the valley is here, and then we'll head over to the Alm. Okay, so you can see it's well worth the climb. Beautiful mountains in the valley here. Got the cows. There's a couple of mountain huts, what we call Alms. Over on the right is, I think, the Dandel Alm. And then if we turn left here, there's another Alm up that way. And so we're gonna go take a break at the Alm, have some Alm food, and then uh, come back down this way and head straight down the other side of the uh, mountain. All right, so we had a great lunch at the uh, Alm and we're heading back down now. So we'll be using the brakes a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna go a different way back. We'll follow a different creek. If 
Before we do that, we can ride through the field some more here. We're doing all the filming here in uh, Ruppolding in Bavaria in Germany, and it's certainly a beautiful setting and lots of great rides that you can do here. And that's, uh, this is really a perfect place for the Bambuck. All these types of trails, uh, logging roads that we're riding on are completely accessible with the strike, very comfortable, and you can ride so long, so far distances, and really never be on the road in traffic, so it's so relaxing. And again, having that comfort of the trike means that uh, we can, you know, ride all day, explore all day, and uh, you're never gonna run out of trails to explore here. There's just so many places you can go. Well, I think in the ride test video here, I've covered most of the things I wanted to talk about. We looked at climbing hills and the fact that you don't have to worry about a minimum speed means you can pretty much climb anything, especially with that uh, low gearing on the roll off. Uh, we've looked at, uh, we've done a descent and talked about how the brakes are very effective. Um, we've been on some rougher terrain and that sort of thing. So I think I've covered most of the points I want to cover in the video. Feel free to skip around. I'm just going to keep rolling and show you some of the uh, beautiful scenery. Now, one of the things I probably won't show you in this video, I've showed you the roll off the extreme for climbing down to the first gear, but probably never going to use our 13 or 14. We do have 14 gears. 14 is for downhill and going really fast. You know, you could pedal 40, 50, 50 kilometers an hour and still keep pedaling. On a lot of bikes with a narrow gear ratio, you're going to find once you get to a certain speed, there's no point in pedaling anymore because your legs are spinning so fast. Here we won't have that uh, problem, but of course, uh, we don't want to quite go that fast since we want to enjoy the scenery. In fact, as Allison will point out, we're not allowed to go fast. The uh, sign up there is telling us that uh, we need to proceed slowly, I believe. My German is not very good, but uh, I understand a few bike words and, of course, some food words as well. You'll notice there's a lot of these uh, bumps in the road here for drainage, these uh, metal or sometimes wooden bumps, and no problem going over them. Again, with these 24-inch tires, we're not worried about getting stuck or being too jarring, and the suspension really helps to smooth it out. There is a fair amount of loose gravel and larger kind of chunkier rocks. You can see that coming up here. And on a bike, uh, you know, I've ridden down here with my son on a bike and you definitely need to be paying attention, especially when you get into these corners. You don't want to be losing traction. You don't want to have to be slamming on your brakes and losing traction as well. Um, and there are, you know, some pedestrians on here, so you have to be cautious. Again, with the trike, we're not worried about any of that. The traction's fantastic. Brakes work really well. I'm not uh, worried about locking them up or skidding out. So it's uh, a lot more relaxing. If you want it to be exhilarating, you can. You can pick up the speed a little bit and uh, the corners can be quite thrilling, but I think we're uh, happy with relaxing and enjoying the scenery. 
I'm actually going to pull over up here. I'm finding it quite chilly, so I'm going to stop and get a sweater on. And again, that's one of the great things about the uh, trike is that uh, my bike would be reluctant to stop. The trike, it's easy to stop, get off, get on, look around. It's quite beautiful. So we've changed camera angles again here for you. See some of the creek and yeah, we're definitely into rougher terrain right now. Again, it handles it really, really well. You'll probably hear some clacking. The chain is clacking against the uh, chain guard there as we go over some really bumpy terrain here. Just like you'd have on a regular bike with your chain slapping the chain stay. If you do a lot of riding like this, so where it's really, really bumpy, you could actually uh, put some neoprene protector there to quiet it down a little bit, but it's really not often that you hear it. And it's really only on very rough terrain like this is here. Again, with these 24-inch tires, you'll notice they repaired the bridge <laughs> simply by putting new boards on top. <laughs> they were quite elevated, uh, but you roll over them no problem. Any of the lips like this is no issue at all. Well, we're getting to the end of our descent here and uh, I haven't had to stop to uh, cool down the brakes or anything like that, which is great. These are very uh, powerful brakes. They're actually a cargo bike specific brake, which is a good idea because it is a, a heavier trike. And so it was designed to uh, handle the heavier weight of having two riders and uh, the heavier trike. So, uh, so a lot of times on a descent like this on a bike, you're having to be cautious because you don't want to overheat your brakes. I haven't had that problem at all here. And even though it seems like we take up a lot of room, it's not a problem for people to pass us, either coming up or going down. We're going to now head across the highway, and uh, this is a really good example of um, the the fact that it, although it's a wide trike, we can still go a lot of places. So the first time we kind of went through here, like, ooh, are we going to make it? And I think that's a common thing for people the first riding trikes. They think, oh, you know, we're just so wide, it's going to take up so much space. And in fact, you can fit through a lot of places. So the, really the only challenge here is remembering our turning radius. So am I going to make it? Oh, not quite. <laughs> so foot down out of the pedal, push back a little bit further. Now I've only got a few hundred kilometers on this. I eventually think that I'll get better at the corners. Going through a big puddle here, no problem. There's a lot of roots here coming up ahead. 
you can see we've got a barrier on the right and a barrier on the left and a very narrow trail and no problem fitting through there beside the highway. We've been through a few other places like that that are fairly narrow and it's generally not a problem to fit through. So we'll stop recording now. If there's a few other really scenic places, we'll pick up some more uh, video for you and uh, feel free to skip around. It's been a lot of fun. If you get a chance to come try one, I would uh, love to have you come to the store in uh, Shemanus and beautiful Vancouver Island in Canada to try it out. You can uh, book an appointment or uh, reach out to us with any questions you have on our website. And uh, you can find that at citrustrikes.ca. So this section of the trail here, it's beautiful with the waterfall to the left there. The last time we were in Rupolding, we had a couple of bikes with us and we came down here. And this is, you probably can't tell from the camera, but it's crazy bumpy, <laughs> like really, really rough. And I remember us saying, okay, we're never going that way again because it was just, Oh, tiring because you're always worried that you're gonna fall get thrown off your bike and it's so rough and uncomfortable and just not fun <laughs> so here we are again on it and we're going well what, what was wrong with it it's fine <laughs> and that's because the uh, suspension is so good that you know I can hear the bumps but I don't feel them so I, I know it's bumpy and I can look at it and I can hear all the bumps but yeah it's just very, very smooth with the uh, suspension. It's not a problem. Um, these are actually been really good tires as far as uh, stability and traction goes. So yeah, we're on the trail. We said we'd never go on again. And it is actually quite scenic. To the right, you've got some beautiful mountains there and it's a really nice trail, except for all the bumps, of course. So here's the kind of terrain we're riding over with lots of roots rocks, loose rocks, you can hear them bumping around. And I think the first time, you know, we came along here and it was so bumpy and we said we're never going to do it again. We also kind of remarked that, oh, it wasn't even very scenic. Well, I think it's because, you know, we were only looking down at the ground the whole time. Now that I'm on a trike, I'm looking around and I look to the right and wow, there's, you know, beautiful lake and mountains and this is quite nice. It seems like I talk about the suspension a lot, but I really can't uh, overemphasize how much of a difference that makes. You know, I ride trikes myself, I've ridden quite a number of different trikes from different companies with or without suspension, and certainly having the suspension makes a, a lot more possible to do rides like this. Because really, without the suspension, you just turned around and went a different way because it's just, it would be so rough tiring trying to control but uh, yeah, it's very comfortable. And even though it's uh, very rough I'm still able to uh, ride with one hand here. Still have lots of control and of course the gearing brakes and uh, Bosch controller is on the right as well. Not that I've changed from turbo at all. I mean, we've done a lot of climbing, long distances, and you know, we still have over half of our battery and we're more than halfway home, so I'm not really worried about it. So we're coming up to a beautiful clear lake here on the right. And uh, sometimes you can see fish. And this is a great example of why we like riding tandem. So when we've been by here on our bikes before, I've said to my wife like, hey, look, there's fish in the lake. And she's like, no, I'm not looking because if I look, I'm gonna ride right into the lake. 
It sounds funny, but she's not the only one. I've had lots of people tell me, you know, that they end up going where they're looking. And so they find it hard when they're riding on a bike to really enjoy and look around because, you know, they don't want to end up, well, in the lake. Uh, it's not that deep, but it still wouldn't be very fun. So it's great being on a tandem. She can look for fish, and we have seen a few, although the other day I think there were some people fishing here so I don't know if there's any left but it's certainly uh, a beautiful lake and it's a lot of fun being on a tandem and being able to enjoy the uh, scenery. So I'm actually riding the trike by myself right now, and uh, it's working really well. I do find that if I've got a steep climb on gravel, then you're going to want to bring that back end a little bit closer so you get more weight on the rear wheel, and actually bring some weight along. I put a bunch of water bottles in my bag and put it on the rack. That seems to help a fair bit. Also just being in the right gear for the climb, make sure you're sure that you're not spinning too much. and. Oddly enough, sometimes you don't want to be in turbo. You want to be a little bit lower so you don't spin out. But it's actually a lot of fun to ride by yourself. Super comfortable as well.